Minimalism is an interesting concept. A lot of people associate it with aesthetic Instagram pages full of matte grey household items and people sitting in white rooms drinking black coffee. However, minimalism can be defined as a style in which a number of very simple things are used to create a particular effect. While this can be used to remove physical distractions from your life, I also like to apply it to my digital life. Oh, and just so you know that this video is about minimalism, this voiceover is recorded over me making a cup of coffee. So I've been spending a lot of time recently really refining what I keep on my laptop and the sort of the file system that I use from day to day to ensure that I can work as efficiently as possible. We all have that one friend who's got the really messy desktop, it's just full of PDFs, pictures, documents, and it personally it makes me die a little bit inside whenever I see anybody with a desktop that is just impossible to navigate. And I think you're going to shoot yourself in the foot a little bit when it comes to finding that important document or that file that you really need at the last second. And eliminating that distraction and that extra bit of time that it takes to do a simple task really allows you to improve your workflow and work as efficiently as possible. So I thought in this video I would just run you through how I format my laptop, um, what software I'm using, what programs I keep on my laptop, the file system that I use to keep myself organized, and just some general tips on how you can streamline your workflow so you can work as efficiently as possible. So this is what I see when I open my desktop, and I always want to keep this clear. I don't want to have any folders, any files at all on my desktop. I just want to have it as blank as possible and that's just because I like to open my laptop and just be greeted with nothing um, and I think this is really important for me because it allows me to sort of start on a fresh slate like I don't have to think about trying to move anything around don't have to organize anything and I'm just going to talk you very briefly through my desktop so down at the bottom we have the applications bar and you can see that a couple of things are open it's just logic which is currently recording the audio for this voiceover and also QuickTime Player, which is screen recording right now. And I only use apps that I use every single day in the bottom of the apps bar. So that includes Finder, the Launchpad, Safari, Spotify, Capture One, Final Cut Pro, Logic, and obviously I don't use this every day, but it's in there for now. And I don't have it set to show my recent applications because I think that's annoying and a little bit of a weird display that they have. So I just keep it the ones that are open and the ones that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I just remove all the default apps as well, so this remains as clean as possible. I also have the magnification on, so it's easier to click on my apps that I want to use. I also don't have the dock set to disappear because I find that slightly annoying as well, so it's always there, and I just make apps full screen whenever I use them. So if we go up to the notification center, you can see that I have no new notifications. That's because every time a new one comes up, I address it and I delete the notification. So this is always clear. If you go onto this tab, I'm not quite sure what this is called, um, like a summary tab, I guess. I only have two things on here. Uh, this is default, you can't get rid of this, which is night shift, which I never really turn on my laptop and do not disturb, which I only use when I'm doing like calls or something and I don't want notifications coming up. So I have this app here called Monit, um, which I assume is short for monitor. And this is a handy little app that basically just gives me a brief overview of my entire laptop. So it tells me how much of my CPU is being used, what memory is being used, how much of my disk is full, and the amount of battery I have. You can see in here that it also gives you a rundown of the health of your battery and how many cycles it's done, um, which is how many times it's been fully charged. And you can see that mine's at about 86%, which is okay, I guess. It is an older laptop, um, and I might end up having to get the battery replaced at some point when this becomes a little bit more degraded. Um, and it also gives you a time until it's going to be fully charged. So this is the disk space as well, and this tells me how much of my disk is being used. You can see that I've got a huge amount free because I just did a factory reset, which meant I cleared out a load of system stuff. It gives me peace of mind that I've got space on my laptop to import things. And also when this starts to creep up, it gives me a reminder to clear some space off my laptop. And then below, I've just got my calculator, which I use for just calculating simple sums. Um, I don't use it to do anything complex. It's generally just adding things up like bills or invoices. Um, and that's literally all I keep in here. So it's just these two things. I don't have any other widgets. You can see that these are the ones available. Um, and I just think this looks really clean. So I'm going to take us to the launch pad now. And I can either click down here or use a four finger swipe motion. Um, which is what I use all the time basically it just stops me having to click anywhere so the gestures are really important when I'm using my laptop and you'll see that this is really empty as well and I basically categorize everything into what I use on a day-to-day -day basis so I want to have everything that I use constantly available 
and everything that I don't use constantly, I want it tucked away and I don't want it taking up all this space and just being annoying. So I have Safari, System Preferences and Notes. They're the three that I use pretty much all the time. And I'm gonna do a deep dive into Safari in a second, just to show you what how I use Safari. And then System Preferences, you'll be surprised how many times a day I actually go into System Preferences to change like mic inputs, um, display inputs and things like that. So this is a really key app for me. And then Notes I use all the time and it's it's impressive how much time I spend in the notes app just writing things down yeah it's just a really handy app and I think the notes app is actually one of the most underrated apps on the app store for both Mac and iPhone very clean very simple and I use it all the time then over here we go into the Apple one and this is basically just a folder with all of the stock Apple apps that come with your computer now you could go through and delete all of these in the application center but I decided to just keep them on my laptop it saves me having to re-delete them every time I do a format of my laptop. It's just a bit easier just to keep them in here and it's out of the way, it's tucked away. They don't take up any space, these apps really. And then we have an other folder up here as well. These are all the apps that nobody ever uses when they buy a MacBook. The only thing that I use sometimes is terminal, system information, MIDI setup, and just a, a couple of other things like QuickTime Player. But you know, who plays chess on their laptop or uses stickies. Um, I also just have AVG antivirus in here, Google Chrome and Monitor, which I've just updated, hence why it's got that blue dot there. I use Google Chrome for some other things that you can't do on Safari. Sometimes web pages and online forms work in Chrome and not in Safari, which is kind of annoying. And it's not actually Safari's fault, it's whoever's made the website, it's their fault. Um, but I just keep Google Chrome just for those um, circumstances. AVG antivirus is what I use to keep my system free from malware um, and any harmful viruses that might come into my laptop from an email or a website. So over here we have photo, video and music and these are the photo, video music apps that I use almost every single day. Um, Photoshop I don't use every day but it's in there because I use it for basic adjustments and uh, some retouching in images. Capture One I use every single day for editing my photos. I don't use Lightroom. Uh, Spotify is my chosen music player of choice. Um, I don't use iTunes, I don't use Apple Music. It's still got a few bugs it needs to fix, especially on iOS, but I think generally it's a good application. Logic Pro is what I'm using to record this voiceover right now, and I use this for all of my music production. If we come out of here, I'll just show you what Logic Pro looks like very quickly. Um, so this is basically the display, and it's just recording this voiceover. And then Final Cut Pro is what I use for all my video editing. And I've used Premiere in the past. I cannot get along with Premiere. I think it's an absolute nightmare of an application, much like most of Adobe's products, to be honest. Also, it's a one-off payment as well. So the, when you buy it, you have it forever and you get all the updates as well. It's the same with Logic Pro as well. So I think Final Cut Pro is 300 pounds and Logic Pro is 200 pounds. So, you know, <laughs> 500 quid's worth of stuff next to each other in there, but it's a worthy investment and you'll have it for the rest of the time you're using a Mac operating system. So this is how I organize my Finder and I've taken a lot of stuff out of this sidebar. Um, you can do that by just right clicking and remove from sidebar. So basically all I keep here is a location, my favorites and my iCloud folder. So when it launches, I've got it set to display desktop and that just shows again, nothing when it comes up. Um, again, I like this and I can see uh, at a glance if there is anything on my desktop, then it will show up here and I can easily move that around. If we come into downloads, you can see that there's nothing in my downloads folder either. What I do is if I download a file, I'll use it, I'll move it and I'll delete it from downloads. So if we move into documents, you can also see that this is very clean. I've only got four folders in here. So Adobe, this is some of the uh, like EXIF stuff that uh, Adobe needs to use to run their programs. Then I've got my clients, which I keep in here. Then I've got some flat details and my university details. I'm not gonna show you my clients because obviously that's gonna contain some sensitive information. Um, however, this is where I keep all my invoices, any assets that I need to use with my clients. So if we go into assets, you can see that this is where I keep a lot of my YouTube assets and some imagery. Um, if we go into the YouTube folder, you can actually see that I've got a working project in here. Um, and this is where I keep my thumbnails as well. It's really handy just to have them when I need them. It's good for social media sharing as well because I can just airdrop this to my phone, um, stick on Instagram just to let people know that the video has been updated, the description has been updated, or I've added this to my website. So that's really handy for me just to have these here. If you go into movies, this again, very small amount of stuff in here. So I have my Final Cut Pro and this is basically where I keep my library. As you can see, there's a video in here at the moment and that's taking up about 12 gigabytes worth of space. 
and then my exports folder. So when I export from Final Cut Pro, I'll export into this folder. Once the video from here is exported, I will put it into iCloud Drive. And this basically means that I don't store any final videos on my laptop because they take up a lot of space. So if I click in here, you can see that these take up quite a bit of space. They're about a gig to two gigabytes each. This is obviously a larger file because that's a very long uh, video. And this basically just keeps my computer clean of any large files. Um, this allows me to have a faster laptop um, and also I, I've got more space available to use. And then motion templates is basically all of the file system that Final Cut needs to run. Um, so in here I'll have effects generator, sound effects, titles and transitions. Um, the titles, I have some custom titles and I have some custom generators so that's where I copy and paste those into there um, and that's all I keep in this folder as well. Going into pictures you can see that that's where that assets folder is kept. I have a capture one folder in here, this is where I import my libraries to and then if we open this up you can see that the way that capture one runs is that it creates an output folder for you. Um, so if I go into here you can see that I've got some outputs in here as well. Um, this is just a picture from when Sophia and I went to the Lake District. Um, you can see that this basically just keeps the JPEGs in here and then once I'm completely finished with this library, I'll move it onto an external hard drive. This is something Sophia and I are currently working on. I've got some website images in here. Like I, I really enjoy having a file system that is simple, easy to navigate. If I go into automotive, for example, again, it's it's like, it's files within files within files, but it keeps me organized and it means I can find anything I need because it's categorized. I know where I can find this image because it's in Audi, automotive, website images. And I use that when I'm updating my website. So there are new images moving in and out of this all the time. Then I've got a folder called working book because I'm working on a photo book at the moment. So I need a folder where I can constantly add and take away images and that just sits in my pictures folder. So coming out of Finder, I just want to talk very briefly about Safari because there isn't anything else I really want to talk about on my laptop. Uh, the only thing I would mention is this top bar here is very clean. The only thing that's running at the moment is that, um, which is a QuickTime player. And then I have my Creative Cloud, which is basically where you can download any Adobe apps. I have the battery and the battery percentage showing just because I think it's handy to see how much percentage you've got instead of trying to guess. Then I've got the day of the week and the time in a 24 hour clock and if I click on this it shows me the date as well so I don't need to have the date on there that just sort of keeps it like quite nice and balanced either side. So if I come into Safari down here you can see that I've taken away all of the stock websites that Apple includes and that's because I don't use any of them. Um, they have like a Disney one in there for some reason I don't really understand why um, but I've deleted all of those so I have my website, Squarespace, YouTube, Gmail, Musicbed and WordPress and WordPress is for my university uh, workbook. Musicbed I use for all my music licensing for my videos. Gmail I use every single day. YouTube I use every single day. Squarespace and my website I use every single day. So this basically allows me to just access any of these really quickly. I can view my website quickly, make sure everything's running smoothly and then I can open up Squarespace or Gmail or whatever. And then you'll see that I've taken away a lot of the stuff up here as well. For some reason this is bugging out and I can't seem to delete the downloads thing because I don't use that I just use the finder one but this is like really nice and clean when I go full screen it allows me to just navigate forward and back really easily then the big search bar at the top and I just think this looks really good and then once I'm done with an app as well I'll command Q and that will quit the app that means it's not running in the background but yeah that's pretty much it for my laptop setup and there you have it that is pretty much it that is how I format my laptop that's how I set up my folders that's the applications that I use on a day-to-day -day basis I think it's really important to remember that this is going to vary from person to person the apps that I use will probably vary quite greatly between you and I and I think it's really important to find your own way of doing things your own style of setting up your folders and the different applications that you use but at the end of the day it's all about eliminating those distractions improving your workflow and I think you will find really positive results if you go down a similar route to what I have so if you have any questions on this topic be sure to leave them down in the comment section below be sure to leave a like and also subscribe to this channel for future videos but I think I'm going to leave it there thank you very much for watching and I shall see you in the next video